For at TV, the world is thinking. And this story um, actually just came out on, uh, uh, in a paper today, so I'm very happy about this. Um, it's about placebo. So first of all, let me tell you something about placebo. Uh, many people think about placebo as sugar pill or just psychology. It turns out placebo is very interesting. It turns out that if, if a physician comes and injects you with water with salt, saline water, your thought that you're going to get pain relief actually creates pain relief. We actually secrete a substance called op opioids, very much like morphine, and we have this substance in, in us, and we can secrete it. Now, the interesting, the magic about placebo is you can't close your eyes and say, please, please, can I get some painkillers? It doesn't work this way. But if an external stimulation happened, your body does it automatically. You can think about it a, bit like, a little bit like Pavlovian conditioning. Bell, food, salivation, bed full, salivation. At some point, the salivation advances in time, preparing the body for what it expects to happen in the future, and therefore creating a different physiology and a different reality. Now, we've done um, a study on placebo, which looked like the following. Uh, we told people we have a new drug called Valadon Rx. We're very proud of our drug. We made little brochures about it. We had little pens with the logo of the company. Uh, people came in, they filled an extensive medical history about everything that happened to them and their family. <clears throat> and then we measured their blood pressure, their, all kinds of things that we could measure to get them feel like it's really a medical thing. <clears throat> and then we connected them to a machine that gave them electrical shocks and we measured how much pain they could tolerate. Okay? We did this and then we gave them a painkiller. We gave them a painkiller, we asked them to sit down and wait next to a pile of old Time and Newsweek magazines to really feel like a physician's office, <clears throat> and then we measured the, we repeated the process of measuring the pain tolerance again. So we have pain tolerance, pill, pain tolerance. And the thing we changed between people was what brochure we gave them with the pill. Some people were told that the pill was expensive, and some people were told the pill was cheap. Will it matter? Will the fact that people think the pill is cheap change the efficacy of that medication? By the way, the pill was vitamin C. There was, nothing, <coughs> there was nothing in it. Basically, what the results show is that expensive painkillers work much better uh, than cheap painkillers. That the moment we expect something to be worse because it's on discount, it actually can undermine the expectation and actually become, become worse. <coughs> it's also interesting that this effect was particularly strong for people who recently had more pain. Because in some sense, for the people who actually need it the most, this effect was particularly important. We, we did this experiment with other things as well, by the way. We also did it with energy drinks. So we sold energy drinks to people in the entrance of the gym at full price, at a half price. It turns out you sell people drinks, energy drinks at half price, they exercise less and feel more tired. It also turns out that when you sell people energy drinks at half price and you give them a series of word problems to solve, anagrams, they don't solve as many. It's like they're not as smart uh, if they bought the cheap, the cheap energy drinks. <clears throat> Let me tell you one more experiment. We, we did this study in which we asked people to, we gave them a sample of two beers. One was regular beer, one was beer with balsamic vinegar. <clears throat> and we say, which one do you like better? Balsamic vinegar was a big hit. Beer with balsamic vinegar was, was more popular than a regular beer. But if we told people up front that one of those beers have balsamic vinegar, we said this one has and this one doesn't, people hated it. It didn't matter how much they tasted it, they hated it. In some sense, the, the big point from all of this is that when we have a certain expectations, these expectations have an incredible power to shape the reality that we live in. If you expect something to be worse just because it costs less, it has a tendency to actually become that. And if you think uh, beer is going to taste bad because it has balsamic vinegar, um, there's not going to help you to experience it because your, your ideas are going to overwhelm uh, reality. I think it's a very uh, difficult uh, point actually to ponder the idea that, that reality uh, uh, might be so dependent on what we expect, what we expect it to be. Um, I'll just say a couple of more things about that. The, the discounted uh, pain medication I think are particularly interesting when we ask some applied questions. So how do we do discounted medications to needy populations, right? I mean, if, if the discounted medication is going to have a worse effect, how do we overcome that? Uh, how do we do copay? 
right? Is there a way in which the copay is actually dampening the efficacy of medication? <clears throat> and what do we do with medical testing? In FDA testing, we don't include any of those variables as a part of the medicine. We saw a huge effect of, of price. Could it be that FDA testing uh, should, should include some of those uh, factors into them? <clears throat> and, and by the way, placebo plays a huge role in medicine. There was a paper last week that showed that antidepressants for most people work just as well as placebos. It's not because placebos are not great. It's because placebos are so amazing that medical science has a very hard time catching up uh, to the quality of our own body in healing itself.